Buckingham Palace has announced that Prince Andrew is returning his royal and military titles to the Queen and will no longer be referred to as His Royal Highness in any official capacity. It comes after a court ruling in the US yesterday, which left the Prince facing a civil case later this year against Virginia Giffray, who says she was sexually assaulted by him two decades ago when she was a teenager. He has consistently denied the allegations. Prince Andrew retired from public duties in November 2019 after an interview about the claims with the BBC's Newsnight and will now have to defend the court case as a private citizen. Here's our Royal Correspondent, Nicholas Witchell. It was a day to take stock for Andrew, seen leaving his home near Windsor Castle this morning, to ponder the situation in which he now finds himself, a situation in which, for him, none of the options is a good one. The days of this, of standing proudly on the balcony of Buckingham Palace in military uniform alongside his family, are over. His family, and particularly his elder brother Charles and his nephew William, had to put aside family feeling. The priority now was the family's protection from severe reputational damage. Just after five o'clock, Buckingham Palace issued a short statement regarding the Duke of York. With the Queen's approval and agreement, the Duke of York's military affiliations and royal patronages have been returned to the Queen. The Duke of York will continue not to undertake any public duties and is defending this case as a private citizen. At the same time, the palace let it be known that Andrew would no longer be known as His Royal Highness. So what does it all mean? It means we will never see Andrew like this again, riding as honorary colonel of the Grenadier Guards at Trooping the Colour. He stepped down, by mutual agreement we're told, from that position and from roles in nearly a dozen other regiments. He's also giving up roles in the Royal Navy and the RAF. In military circles there was considerable relief. The MP Tobias Elwood is a former army officer. The Royal Family has an intimate relationship you know, with the, the regiments going back in, in history. Uh, many of them are honorary colonels and, and so forth. And uh, it's important that, uh, that it, the, the problems that uh, Prince Andrew has incurred sort of aren't bled over into uh, the regiments that he was representing. From sources close to Andrew, we were told he would fight on. The Duke will continue to defend himself against these claims, they said. The claims began more than 10 years ago now with the publication of this photograph of Andrew with the then 17-year-old Virginia Roberts and this photograph of him with the convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. In his Newsnight interview, Andrew said he rued the day he became involved with Epstein. And that's, that's, that's the bit that, 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 that um, as it were, I kick myself for on a daily basis because it was not something that was becoming of a member of the royal family. And we try and uphold the um, highest standards of, and practices, and I let the side down. Simple as that. Two years on from that interview, Andrew, Duke of York, second son of the Queen, ninth in line to the British throne, stands alone. Nicholas Witchell, BBC News. Well, our correspondent Helena Wilkinson is in Windsor for us. And Helena, the Prince cuts a very isolated figure this evening. Yes, he does. Windsor is where Prince Andrew lives, Rita. His home is around three miles away from the castle here in Windsor Great Park. And he is rarely seen out and about here, sometimes in the park, but that is about it. And since that interview with Newsnight in 2019, since he stepped back, from public duties, he has led a very isolated life here. Now, he shares his home with his former wife here, Sarah Ferguson, and perhaps he is going to be turning to her in this moment. But going forward, we are not going to see Prince Andrew out and about again as a working member of the royal family. And that decision clearly designed to separate Prince Andrew's court case from the royal family's public duties. He will now focus on the case. The Queen, who should be celebrating uh, this year, her 70 years on the throne, uh, the palace will be very much hoping that this decision about Prince Andrew will lift what was to be a very dark cloud over those celebrations. And as for Prince Andrew, Rita, going forward, he is going to be leading an even more isolated life here in Windsor. Helena, thank you. 
Well, Nick Witchell joins me now. Uh, Nick, an unprecedented situation, this, for the royal family. It is. I mean, a bit of context. The royal family really hasn't faced a situation such as this in modern time, with a senior member of the family, the second son of the monarch, facing an allegation of sexual assault in a court, an allegation, of course, which he denies. But the royal family have acted very quickly because the reputational risk is very considerable and very real. And I think we can detect the hands of Charles and William in all of this. It would be very odd if the Queen was not consulting them, was not taking their counsel, uh, uh, particularly, of course, in the absence now of the Duke of Edinburgh. They will be concerned, I'm sure, for Andrew at a human level, but they are very much more concerned for the reputation of the institution, as Helena was saying there. Now, Andrew's position regarding the regiments was plainly untenable. He has agreed, we're told he's agreed, not to use the styling of HRH anymore, and he will fight this case, he says he will fight it, as a private citizen. Now, for Andrew, this must be devastating. The last bits of superstructure, of framework around him for the past 40 years have been taken away, have been stripped away. But his family are trying to protect the monarchy from any further, as it were, collateral contamination from this case. Thank you very much, Nick. Nick Witchell, our Royal Correspondent.